Good evening, everybody. My name is Jody Stanfield. I'm your neighbor on Colby Avenue. I am a white, middle-aged, democratic woman of the middle class. Now, I was chatting with a friend over coffee at Gateway Market in 2016. My friend was Kathy. Kathy is a white, middle-aged woman, a Democrat, working poor. And in that day, in 2016, she looked at me and she said, I'm thinking of voting for Trump. She looked me right in the eyes and she said, nothing is going to change under Clinton. And it took my breath away. I was alarmed. In the last three years, that Trump alarm has been getting louder and louder in my sleeping and waking hours. How about you? Yes. Yes. Woo! We need bold ideas. If not now, when? We need plans that are comprehensive in their scope and in their detail. If not now, when? Yeah. We need the wisdom of a woman in the Oval Office. Yeah. If not now, when? But most importantly, my neighbors, we need each other if we're going to take ourselves out of this national crisis. Many in this room tonight have decided to unite behind Elizabeth Warren. People from the Booker campaign, the Castro campaign, the Harris campaign, the Klobuchar campaign. How about you? If not now, when? Thank you. Hello, my name's Cody. Uh, I'm with Pete. Uh, I just want to thank everyone for being here. I know that not everyone here is for Pete, and that's perfectly okay. I think right now what we have to understand and, and really get behind is that we are still one party. Even though we are split into four or five different groups here, like that is still the one thing that remains, is that we are all still Democrats, and we all still want to see change in the White House. So yes, uh, thank you so much. I know that many of you may not enjoy caucusing as much as others do, uh, but this is the step that we have to take in order to make that change happen. And I think it's Pete that can do that because he's the person that's going to bring together everyone, not just Democrats, but also people from the other side of the aisle. He's someone that can just get everyone together and united as one nation. And I think that that's what Pete really has. Um, so that, that's my why, Pete. So thank you again for coming. My name is Natalie Harwood. I'm gonna start a timer because I wanna be respectful. Okay, I've always voted, but I was never really involved in politics until I got pregnant with my daughter five and a half years ago. And since then, I've done a lot of losing. Protest after protest, bill after bill, I marched, spoke, lobbied my heart out, and lost. But I have a fire in me, and I get back up and fight harder every time because I know the fight is gonna be worth it. In Bernie, I see the fire too. I've watched videos from him from the 90s, the 80s, the 70s of him fighting. Sometimes lonely fights with just him in a house hearing, sometimes not so lonely fights like the watch, uh, March on March Washington. I support Bernie because I believe in single payer healthcare and student debt relief and breaking the chokehold of corporate ag, but policies mean nothing without the fire to fight for them, no matter what, and Bernie has the fire. Every battle I've lost can be traced back to money if you look hard enough. Bernie is the only candidate who has never accepted a dime of billionaire or corporate PAC money. Politicians are ultimately beholden to their donors. This is what I've learned in the last five years of losing. Bernie has the most small donors of any candidate in American history. <laughs> he has to fight with us for us or his political career is over. I will fight for him because he has the fire and I do too. Buddy, um, right off the bat, in the spirit of transparency, I'm not from Iowa. I'm from Chicago, Illinois. And I, uh, at my own expense, drove here, got a hotel here to be knocking on doors for Joe Biden. Because I, I'm doing this for my kids. What has happened in the last four years to this country has been absolutely appalling. Everything that this great nation is supposed to represent has been totally uh, decimated by the, that man who's in the White House right now. We need to restore our dignity. We need to restore our empathy. We need to restore our compassion. We need to restore our nation's values to the White House and to people dealing with, over, uh, with uh, foreign, uh, foreign officials. Um, and I, you know, I could say that Joe Biden uh, can hit the ground running and re begin to repair our damaged relations with our allies and our damaged 
image in the rest of the world. But the real reason that I'm here today is because Joe Biden has the ability to, like no other politicians I've ever seen, to empathize with average people. I think a lot of it has to do with the terrible tragedies, unspeakable tragedies that he has lived through. The loss of his two, son, uh, two children, the loss of his wife, his first wife, uh, the brain aneurysm that almost took his life. He has suffered personally, and he has the ability to empathize with average people. We need to have, back in the White House, a leader who can empathize, who can govern with compassion, who, who is not a narcissist, who, when there are Nazis marching down the street of Charlottesville, Virginia, or anywhere else in the nation, will speak out and say this is evil, this is wrong, and that there are no good people on that side. So, let me close with this. I don't think there's a person in this room, hopefully not, that won't agree that whoever is our nominee, that we have to get behind 150%. Get that guy out of the White House and restore our nation in everything that it supposedly represents. Thank you.